fire it up. All right, welcome back to the Rock Fantasy Files on the Rock Fantasy YouTube channel. I'm your host, Stephen Keeler, owner of the world-famous Rock Fantasy here in beautiful downtown Middletown. My co-host tonight is Denny Barth, because he's going to ask some questions once again. This is part two of an episode we did about two weeks ago. I, I Someone else stole the car for, Obi stole the car for a week or two and drove it around, so which is fine. And uh, John McAtee actually was the host last week. And John's on tour. We're going to see him. I'm going to go see John next week. So, but anyhow, to make, we're back to talk about Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. Again tonight in the part one, if you haven't watched part one for the viewers, please go back and check it out because we talked about the, uh, the Deano Maiden years, some of the early Priest years and compared that and... Danny brought up some great questions for that. So please go back and take a look at that episode. But tonight we are, uh, and we left off on the last one with Sad Wings of Destiny versus Iron Maiden Killers. So if you haven't seen that, go back and watch it. Tonight we are going to start off, we're not exactly in order tonight, but we're going to start off with a heavyweight question. We're going to the year 1982. And Judas Priest released Screaming for Vengeance. And Iron Maiden released Number of the Beast. So I'm going to go around the panel tonight. And I would like to, you know, I know we, this is unrehearsed. We haven't talked about this. So the guys don't know these questions until we're, we went live tonight. So we are going to go around. I want to introduce everybody first. So I'm being very rude. We got James Delisle. From the mighty Crucial Pain. He's drinking an Iron Maiden beer. We got Ovi staying up all night in Norway. We got Miles Bergram from the Miles of Metal channel. We got Ed Farsley from Armageddon Productions in the center square tonight. We got Tim Denebaum back from British Steel. My good friend. We'll talk a little bit about you later. He saved the day the other night at the concert we were at. He learned to sing Sabotage, Hall of the Mountain King, and perform it within like an hour. So he, he was a trooper. And we got Count Ralphus in the bottom square here from our local metal historian. We got Mr. Tony Dio from North Carolina and we got Denny Sasquatch Barth. So I am going to start with this question again. Screaming for vengeance, number the beast. And I am going to start with my first square up in the corner and it's gonna be James, you're under the fire. Wake wow, up, this one's fucking rough. Not um, easy, especially unrehearsed. Oof, this one's fucking rough. Um, I'm going to have to say Number of the Beast, ultimately because it's the album that got me into Iron Maiden. When I was like 12 years old and just started learning how to play guitar, my brother-in-law and I were hanging out, drinking beers, even though I shouldn't have been drinking beers at 12, but whatever. <laughs> um, and he's going through his tapes in his truck, and he throws two tapes at me. He goes, here, these things give me a fucking headache. I know you like this heavy metal bullshit. Take these. <laughs> and one of them was Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast. And the other one was Judas Priest, Hellbent for Leather. And I had already been into Priest a little bit. I had stained class on cassette at that point. But I didn't have any Maiden. And that cover, I remember being a kid and my mother made me sit down and watch an episode of the Geraldo show. Oh, boy. <laughs> and he did an episode where it's like, is heavy metal corrupting our youth? Mm -hmm. And he talked about all these different, you know, I talked about Wasp and Motley Crue and fucking all these other bands. And I remember seeing the cover for Number of the Beast and hearing three seconds of that song and going, oh, my God, I want that. And my mother looks at me and goes, no, don't even fucking think about it. <laughs> so I finally had that tape in my hands. I couldn't wait to get it home and listen to it. And that album really opened up some big doors for me. I had already been into Priest by the time I got my hands on Screaming for Vengeance, and I love that album. There's not a dull moment on it. But for me personally, Number of the Beast just means a lot more to me than Screaming for Vengeance does. 
So I'm taking number of the beast in this fight, but it's close. Mm -hmm. It's like real fucking close, but number of the beast. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to, we're going to Norway now. We're going to talk to Ovi. Uh, what's Ovi's show when he takes over? What's it called, Sasquatch? Ovi's Kitchen or Ovi Goes to Hell with His Friends? Uh, Ovi uh, Goes to Hell. <laughs> Ovi's Kitchen of Hell. <laughs> something atrocious. It's like Hobbs' Powerhouse <laughs> of Death or something. <laughs> with the big title, Ovi's Kitchen of Hell. Do you have a yeah. cooking show too, Ovi? We can tune into. <laughs> yeah. How to fuck up your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> um as for the question um i didn't get into priest until later so it's pretty easy for me it's number of the beast i didn't get into just priest until i was almost 30 uh but uh, our maiden i bought i will talk more about it in uh, part three but i got into them before i could utter a word in english so maiden is is quite special but if, now, as you go back though and listen to "Screaming for Vengeance," you know, what do you think, though? I mean, it's a great right, it's album. A good album. Yeah. It's a good album. It's a good album. I personally like "Point of Entry" better, but it's wow. a good album. Yeah, you know me. Oh. I like. I like it. Um, but it's such. It's so do two different albums. It's not like it's difficult to compare them to each other because they are. They, they don't have anything in common, really, topic wise or anything but i really like i like both albums don't get me wrong but number of the beast is is it's the deal here for all me. right we're going down to louisiana this man, man's been known to go out behind the house there and wrestle an alligator so we got miles and the uh, miles you're up brother yeah so both of these albums mm -hmm. are pretty special to me because i got into both of these albums pretty early in life and um first off uh number of the beast is one of those records where you know i grew up in a semi-religious um family you know when i grew up i kind of uh in elementary school i went to a uh, catholic school and stuff like that so me you too know, <clears throat> growing up it wasn't like you know you you shouldn't listen to this you shouldn't listen to that and stuff like that yeah. And, you know, when I was younger, my parents used to bring me to church and stuff like that. But um, first record that really got me into exploring the darker side, which is what I'm more interested in in life in general, is Number of the Beast. And the, the, the title track is, has everything to do with that. You know, just hearing Bruce say six, 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 you know, when I first heard that, it was like, you know, you know, am I supposed to be listening to this? You know, what if my <laughs> parents walk in, you know, and I'm listening to this, you know, what they're going to do. But now, you know, I really don't give two fucks. I listen to fucking <laughs> ESI and everything. I don't care. But uh, mm. this was like the this was like the door that opened a lot of that up for me and just exploring the stuff that I had always been interested in. And, you know, you got, you know, like the title track 22 Acacia Avenue you know, and Hollow Be Thy Named, which is like one of Maiden's best songs, in my opinion. But I'm going with Screaming for Vengeance, um, Judas Priest. I know I wasn't on episode one because I had work, but uh, Judas mm -hmm. Priest is one of my favorite bands of all time, if not my favorite band of all time. And uh, this is one of my favorite albums of all time. It's not my favorite Priest album, but I love it to death. It's definitely close second. You know, just the Hellion going into the electric eye. I've always said, if you can't get excited for that, you, you're you just not a metalhead and you don't have a heartbeat, you know. But all these songs, to me, you cannot skip over. Number of the Beast, I can kind of go from track to track and be fine with. But once I listen to the Hellion open up, I got to listen to all of Screaming for Vengeance, you know, Rotting on the Wind, Bloodstone. I even like Take These Chains a fuck ton. You Got Another Thing Coming is one of those songs that it's overplayed, but I still love it to death. And probably my favorite song off this record is the title track, Screaming for Vengeance. Love this record. It's a fucking 11 out of 10 record for me. So I'm definitely going with Screaming for Vengeance. All righty. Nice.
Threw us a curveball oh, yeah. there. He threw us a curveball at first, yeah. which was good. Dude, 22 Acacia Avenue, is there a better song about falling in love and running away with a prostitute? Because I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> no, maybe not. <laughs> right? Roxanne. Yeah, it's like, well, damn. What would you say, Count? I was just saying Roxanne, but that doesn't compare. But... Take a shot, no, Roxanne. Says that's Roxanne. That's <laughs> You don't have to put on the red light, baby. Uh, Ed Farsley, Center Square, welcome. Hey, what's going on, guys? <clears throat> so, yeah, back to Maiden and Priest, the ultimate ultimate metal conversation, the ultimate debate. Um, and these two albums are right up there. I mean, in 1982, I was already very much into Priest, very much into discovering Maiden, but I had, I think I had the first album of Killers. I don't think I had both of them yet, but I had one of the albums. So I knew Maiden. I was very much into Priest already at the time, so I was looking forward to screaming. And both albums delivered just on 100%. Um, absolutely phenomenal. Were just two of the biggest albums for me growing up. I mean, again, Maiden and Priest were the two major metal bands that I, I basically lived and died for. Um, and these two albums were just pivotal in my life. Um, 1982, I was 13 years old. So it was just everything was Priest and Maiden. Um, and these two albums are, they still stand the test of time as being two of the best albums from both of these bands without question. Um, both albums, phenomenal. Start to finish, um, every song, like Miles said, is perfect on screaming. Every song is perfect on numbers. Um, for me, Numbers of the Beast <clears throat> has my all-time favorite Maiden song, Children of the Damned. Uh. Um, Priest, Screaming for Vengeance, Miles mentioned that one too, is again, one of my all-time favorite Priest songs. Um, just two of the best albums. Um, I didn't get to see the tour, unfortunately, in 82. My dad did take me to buy, to buy T-shirts and programs at Madison Square Garden, which was cool. So I got to kind of get the feeling for the show, um, but didn't get to go to the show, of course. Uh, but still, and then went to basically the next tours for both of those bands were my first concerts. Um, and it was just a hell of a great time at that, at that time in 82 with these metal bands. Um, choosing the two albums of to pick one over the other is very, very hard. Um, but I would lean towards Maiden um, because, again, it's got my favorite Maiden song. And it's just like Screaming for Vengeance is a 200 out of 100. Number of the Beast is maybe a 250 out of 100. They're just two absolutely fantastic albums. I would edge Number of the Beast a little bit more, but they're both absolutely perfect. Um, there, there you go. Very good. Thank you. And we head over to Tim Denebaum from the mighty British Steel. That's, well, tell a quick story. We started to talk a little bit about. So Tim was a guest singer with uh, a, a th project we had here in Middletown last weekend called Cobra Cap. Iron Cobra is a local like cover band that plays around the area. They've been doing it. They do it well, and they've been doing it for years. And Chris Caffrey from Sabotage Transiberian Orchestra. They got the idea together to do this once or twice a year where you sign up to sing a song live with the band. And uh, he had, you know, I talked to him. It's a good exposure for you to come down. You get to hang out with Chris and do. Uh, so they had another thing coming. Of course, the Judas Priest song. And he signed up for that at six o'clock that night. The gentleman that was covering Hall of the Mountain King by Sabotage. And of course, the band learned that because Chris is there and a lot of Caffrey fans show up and they want to hear a sabotage so on. So uh person that was doing it, Tommy from Last Pharaoh, became ill and he couldn't do it. So we're running around. Hey, who can sing Hall of the Mountain King? I sound like a cat in the alleyway. I couldn't do it. So uh <laughs> Tim's like, I think I can sing the song, but I don't know it. So he was a trooper and he did his song. He went out to the car, he got some lyrics and Man, he pulled it off. I'm gonna I'm gonna post that video on the channel within, in a couple of days. So nice. you did well. You, you 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 threw the hail mary for uh, for Chris that night. They were so happy. <laughs> I didn't screw up too bad. There's, no, it good. sounded great. In fact, they were they were both complimenting you even after the show. So. Yeah, not easy to do. Not easy to do. No, not easy. no, 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 not at all. You know, it's one of those things, that album, when it came out, I love that album. I had it on cassette. Um, I just never attempted to sing that song before, that's all. <laughs> so I wasn't familiar with the lyrics or anything, but I was familiar with the chorus of it and everything. So I had to learn the verses. <laughs> it was well, fun. Cool. 
All right. So, yeah, you you talk about number of the beasts and uh, you talk about uh, Screaming for Vengeance. These, again, these are two iconic albums. I got Number of the Beast right here. I don't have Screaming. I have it. I don't have the cool looking cover, though. Um, but <laughs> these are great albums. Um, like my favorite era, Maiden era, that from 1980 to like 88. Um, and of course, Number of the Beast, again, there's not one song on here that's weak in any way, shape, or form. I mean, The Prisoner's probably one of my favorite songs. Uh, of course, Run to the Hill is iconic, but uh, it, it, the whole album is just great. Invaders. Um, and then you get to Screaming for Vengeance. Um, what can be said about that album? Uh, it's the same thing. I mean, just iconic. I mean, those are iconic metal albums. Howie and Electric Guy, I know um, for us, uh, British Steel, I mean, we frequently open up with that. That's like a, a common opening song for us. Yeah. Um, so if I'm comparing these two albums, uh, I would give Screamin', uh, for me personally, The Edge. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that with Maiden, uh, as great as this album is, and I love it, Peace of Mind was probably the album that really turned me on to Maiden. So my first really big album that really turned me on to Maiden was Peace of Mind. And for Priest, it was Screaming for Vengeance. Um, so I give Screaming for Vengeance the the, the edge there. Um, but honestly, these are two iconic albums. And there's if if I was introducing somebody to like classic metal, I would point them in the direction of these two albums. That would be the place. That would be the starting point right there for Absolutely. me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yes. So All my right. vote is for screaming. And plus your and the areas number one Judas Priest tribute band. So you kind of have to go with screaming, right? <laughs> yeah. The rest of the guys might say, "Hey, we're finding a singer." <laughs> You're out. <laughs> go sing uh, in a maiden tribute. <laughs> yeah, go get the maiden. <laughs> Count Rufus, how's it going tonight, brother? Right. Um, yeah, like uh, Ed was saying, I was like 12 years old. I had joined Columbia House right around then, so I was getting it all at once. And um, probably from 82 to like 84, half my bedroom was Iron Maiden and Juice <laughs> Street. Yep. I had a few Black Sabbath things in there and a couple other bands mixed in, but but Priest and Sat and uh, Maiden, I had those big six-foot uh, tall live uh, posters. Yeah. Any of you know that? I took up like almost one whole wall, you know, and then you put a couple centerfolds around it. But yeah, I, I worship both of these albums. You could go either way. Um, we did do this on Sea of Tranquility. Actually, the first episode I was ever on, this was what you were comparing. Oh, really? <laughs> and um, I went with Number of the Beast, and I'm going to still go with that, but it's by a hair. Like I said, I worship both of those bands. They're both my favorite bands at that time. So I'm going with Six six six. I, oh God, you got that one too. There he and is. I got, the, um, I got this. Uh, has a little toy in there. Oh yeah, nice, it. nice. I ended up getting all these that fantasy. I ended up rebuying them all just for the little patch in the toy. And um, <laughs> I got up here. Uh, I see pops. Yeah, I hate these pops, but these these were sitting at fantasy for a long time too. And they, dude, they those the are, I think the Iron Maiden pops. Someone's gonna hate me, but I think they're the, like the, maybe the only like cool ones. I, I could say yeah, kind the, the Lemmy and the yeah, Motorhead. some of them like, but the, some of them they all look the same. But at least these look like Eddie, you know. This one, um, I've had this big one for a long time. Um, oh yeah, I have a friend of mine who had it out of the box, and it looked like shit out of the box. So it looks better in the box, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I have What's one in the box. I have one in the corner over here. I was going to bring it out, but it's got a bunch of stuff stacked. Yeah, on I it. had to. I had to undig it out of the hope. I had the Aussie one on top with the the, the moon, and that one, the same thing. My friend had it out in his house, and it looked like Sasquatch or something without the box saying Aussie on. <laughs> Wait a minute! It looked like I'm Denny Barth. <laughs> <laughs> they thought it was a Denny Barth uh, action figure. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think we got to get on that uh, Super Seven. How come we don't have an aggression active figure yet? Yeah, we need a Sasquatch aggression. Yeah. <laughs> Super Seven. Nobody needs, nobody needs that. 
<laughs> All right, we're heading to Carolina. Talk to Tony Dio. Okay, yeah, this is really tough because these are my favorite two albums by each one of these bands. My, I've said before that Killers and Number of the Beast are kind of teeter totters between the two, but it's just Number of the Beast just always seems to, to take it. Um, but uh, I love this Judas Priest record. It's, it is my my favorite Judas Priest, and it's like everyone has said. I mean, there's not a bad track. I don't think on either one of these albums. I mean, some people go with Number of the Beast and they say, "Oh, I don't like Invaders. I don't like uh, Gangland. I love both of those songs." You get to what some people think of the weak tracks on on uh, Screaming, like uh, Pain and Pleasure or Fever. I love those. There's the great tracks. I love everything about both of these albums. Um, it's it's a really really tough choice. I'm gonna go Judas Priest, and I'm gonna pick it because I saw them last night, and they played Devil Child off Screaming for Vengeance. Yeah, and it's just I like it's, 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 it's solidified oh. my brain all day. I've been humming that riff. Oh, <laughs> yeah, wow, it, Devil Child. It's, 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 yeah, it's a tough one. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go Screaming for Vengeance. Here's my Screaming for Vengeance tour book. I didn't see the tour, but someone that did gave me this. Yeah, very nice. nice. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go for Screaming for Vengeance tonight. Tony, do you have the Japanese uh, uh, vinyl of, of Number of the Beast? No, I have a Japanese Screaming for Vengeance. Okay. <laughs> Because the Japanese but, but you know, Number of the Beast has... Talking about both of it. these albums, you know, I mean, I kind of came into them both about the same time <laughs> as well, because uh, Screaming, I can't remember if it was the first Priest that I got. Uh, I think maybe uh, maybe a compilation... Thing that I got maybe was the first thing from Priest, but but Number the Beast was the first thing that I actually owned by Iron Maiden. Some guy loaned it to me, and I recorded it on cassette, and, and I loved it. And I remember MTV would show the Number the Beast video, and <laughs> that was Satanic Panic era, and they showed this video with six six six. I'm surprised that you know they were banned, and they were like certain videos MTV wouldn't play, and but they always mm -hmm. showed that. I thought that was cool. Maybe they got some heat for it because a couple of years later they started really censoring what could be shown. Remember when? I mean, even moving into the '90s when Danzig had the Mother video, they censored that and all the pentagram. Yeah. Right? But you had Number the Beast, you had Motley Crue, Looks to Kill with a pentagram flying, and I mean, this yeah. is satanic yeah. panic. I'm surprised that they didn't really censor, but I'm glad they didn't. Um, but uh, that number yeah. of the beast video was also Nico Nico McBrain's first appearance with, with Maiden, but not playing drums. He was in the, one of the devil masks. Yeah, and he was like, oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, that's great with the dancers with the sixes on their backs and it's just, <laughs> yeah, that was pretty clever. Wow. Whoever came up with that idea, but yeah, but like I said, I'm gonna go with uh, screaming for my pick tonight. All right, Danny Barth, how are you, sir? I'm doing. Awesome. Um, yeah. yeah, I think when I first heard the question, uh, I, I I think it was, um, I already knew what the winner was going to be. Um, but then when I was thinking about the other album, like I started to like, oh, well, this is my favorite song on both albums. But anyway, I'll say what I got to say. Like, um, so listening to Priest, uh, like, you know, since like mid seventies and, and then um, going through the motion of British deal um, point of entry and like um, screaming for vengeance for priests, for me, they, they always like, there's a weird, like up and down. Like, I don't know if it was management or I don't know what happened, but various, a lot of delivery of albums is a little bit on even. Um, and, Off the two albums, my favorite song is Riding on the Wind. Uh, I just love that song, The Rift. I love everything about it. I even like the uh, Abbott cover of the song. Yes. Like yeah, very good. Yeah. Like, I, I, I really like that song. The Alien, the intro, seeing the show in 1982, like, we were blown away. Electric Eye. And um, and I think I'm going to pick the number of the beasts because for two different reasons. The first one is I feel like Number of the Bees doesn't have any fillers. While when I look at Screaming for Vengeance, like, and I mean, 
you know, at that point, I like Venom, I said it many times, it completely screwed up my taste of music after <laughs> listening to Venom. But I, I had a hard time with Take These Chains Off, and I had a hard time with Fever, and some of, you got another thing coming also, like was playing on the fucking radio so much that I could not listen to it anymore. So if I would listen to Number of the Beast on vinyl way back, I would start the Invaders, which... Holy fuck, what an introduction of a new singer, by the way. But like, yeah. start with Invaders and then just play the first side A, then turn the fucking plastic around and just play side B. But for Priest, I used, I was skipped. Like I, I used to skip, like after, like, you know, like one of my buddy also played Bloodstone, the intro riff better than me. So that pissed me off. So I always fucking <laughs> skip that song. Like, fuck you. Um, <laughs> So yeah, for like all kind of like reason that's so personal and not important, I will I will speak as bad. I will take number of the beast, but by no mean like the song "Screaming for Vengeance." I mean it's so fucking heavy, mm -hmm. um, and I love that song. Um, and, and you know it, it's a really really strong album, um, but number of the beast like you know Maiden was a bit more fresh, I guess. And with the switch and singer too, like, you know, like Ed said, like Children of the Dam, Jesus Christ, did we let you know, bring some chicks home and just hey, listen to the song, and then they kind of like, you know, went ahead with it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and uh, Run to the Hills, you know, as a as a hit versus against you've got another coming. I think was uh, was a little bit more, you know. Uh, more pleasant for us as kids. But anyway, my vote is Number of the Beast. Cool. Uh, after I go, is this episode over? Because this seems like it was a heavyweight match. I think we can we can go sleep well after this. Just this one <laughs> album. What the heck? Like, much. I mean, some episodes are just one-on-ones and what the heck are we think we're doing here tonight? But uh, I, I'm i going to really <laughs> echo on it. A lot of things that Sasquatch said as I'm, you know, as I'm looking at the song list for this, like if you're gonna pick this the hit singles off of both Run to the Hills, I never get tired of hearing Run to the Hills still. Like Me if neither. I if I'm at like a concert, like I just saw you know a, a mod a mod of Marth the uh Monday night and they play Run to the Hills before they go on every time. And I mean it just get, anytime you hear that in a setting at a concert, like the whole crowd starts singing it. Another thing coming, it's a great song too, but it doesn't stand up to run to the hills for me. I love, yeah, I like screaming for vengeance a lot too, but I, I agree with what Denny said. There's some songs on there. I wouldn't skip over, but they're not my favorites. And, and because children of the damned is on this album and hallowed be thy name. I'm going to go and 22 Acacia Avenue are like just amazing. Where a place where you can go. Yes. So I'm going to go with number of the beast also on this round. And uh, I guess we'll have to do at least another round. We're supposed to do this could turn into a 20 part episode. <laughs> we're saying we're gonna do it up to like this and then we start doing it and it takes an hour just to do like one one album but uh my next one i picked out would not go on by year anymore because there's way too many judas priest albums to compare to iron maiden albums because they started out years before so the next one i'm going to do we're going to go with 1978 for judas priest with stained class Versus 1983's Peace of Mind. Should I play the Jeopardy? Uh, should I play the Jeopardy theme while, before James gets to go? Or are you ready to go, James? Like, hit it. Da, da, I, da, am, da, 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 da. I am plenty ready to go. I kind of so, like I kind of like going deep in this because I can hear other people talk a little bit first before I got to talk <laughs> on this one. This is a good one for me. Oh wow. Wow. All right. Yeah, for me, it's going to be stained glass. Um, I never quite dug peace of mind as much as Number of the Beast or Power Slave or the debut. 
Um, great songs on there, of course. Of course, the trooper. Who doesn't fucking love that song? Um, Revelations, great. I always thought Quest for Fire was a little fucking goofy. It's kind of a goofy one. I thought To Tame a Land was a little fucking goofy. Um, what's uh, you know, Flight of Icarus, great song. You know, you got some good die with your boots on. That's all killer. Oh, Where yeah. Eagles Dare, man, and that's that's your introduction to Nico McBrain. You know, that's the first time you hear that dude play drums, and that's all single bass. That's not double mm-hmm. bass. So that dude's a beast, and right away you're getting introduced to him as as a real motherfucker there. <laughs> but I just, oh, man, staying class, that's one for me where there's not a dull moment on that record. I love every second every piece of music even the cover even the better by you better than me all of that every second of that and maybe it's because i'm emotionally attached to that record that's the first judas priest album i ever owned i remember going into caldor who remembers caldor i do i I worked there (laughs) so i went to caldor as a kid and my mother used to say, all right, you got 10 bucks. Go into the music section and get a tape. So there were the regular tapes, the new shit that was out at that time. And then there was the cheap section where you could get tapes for $3.99 or $4.99. Yeah. I said, all right, I'm going to be smart about this and walk away with fucking two albums. Mm. <laughs> and there was Judas Priest staying class for $3.99. I grabbed that. And I forget what the other thing was I grabbed. Maybe it was like Paul Stanley's 1978 solo record from the- <laughs> and uh, brought that Priest album home. And holy shit, was I blown away. I had oh, yeah. heard the name Judas Priest before. Never really heard their music. I think it was like 11 years old, 91. Um. So, yeah, that I mean, Exciter, that's. You know, that's kicking the album off. That's really my intro to Priest. That's the first time I ever fucking heard him. Beyond the Realms of Death, the lyrics in that, just so fucking emotional. The music is incredible. Oh, man, fucking Savage. That's an underrated Judas Priest song. Oh, yeah. Nobody nobody really talks about Savage. That's a fucking great song. White Kicking Red Hot. White Heat Red Hot, so badass. Oh. So yeah, for me, it's it's kind of a no contest for for this round. So I'm I'm taking staying class all the way. Cool, cool. Yeah, the more you talk about staying class, uh, it's it's just, right. It's it such a power. Yeah, I think you kind That's... of swayed me. I was leaning one way, and yeah. <laughs> well, maybe Ovi will swing us somewhere else, but uh. <laughs> We have the Obi next, and of course, Priest on tour in the States right now. A Tony just saw him last night. They're doing Saints in Hell on the tour, and it's just... I can't believe I missed this tour. Well, you can go to Albany Tuesday. If you want to meet me, I'm going. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to MDF next week. I can't go to Albany. (laughs) Go to concert every night all week. Yeah. (laughs) All right, Obi, welcome back. Yeah, I'm seeing priests next month, so it's gonna be interesting to see if they do something with the set list when they come back to Europe again. Um, as for these albums, I mean, peace of mind is is Nico Work Brain. Yeah, you get the introduction of him with very eagles there, and and Revelations again is his first Bruce song, the first Bruce song ever made for Maiden, and Revelation is such a good song. I mean, it has such. Our atmosphere it has such uh the, the chorus is going is is so cool it's like i bought this album at quite a young age so it had a strong impact on me and uh, i'm a i'm one of those that love still life i think it's it's such a good song and it's also on made in england on the on the vhs i had back in the day they had still life on it, and and they just uh, start with Dave Murray start there. Nobody plays like Dave Murray. He plays like I don't know. He has angel fingers or something because he, mm-hmm. he the way he plays is is so smooth. It's like it's like water. Um, but yeah, 
the peace of mind for me. Staying class, I've heard a lot. So of course, I know a lot of people that it's their favorite Judas Priest album. I know, and I like it too. Um, but uh, here's the memories, and it's the personal impact. I can't go past that. So I got to be honest to myself and say peace of mind. Awesome. And we're going back to see Miles. What's going on down there, Miles? Are you are you are you got uh, are you nervous about this one? Oh no, not at all. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I love uh both these records. I love um I think both of them are fucking ten out of t well, both of them are really good. But uh, you know, peace of mind. I've said it before. I like the record. It's definitely not my favorite Iron Maiden record. Um, I said I've said it before. Where Eagles Dare is probably one of the best openers to an album that I ever created, and uh, it's one of my favorite Iron Maiden songs. The Trooper is so you know iconic as an Iron Maiden song. It's probably one of their you know most well known songs. Revelation, Still Life. You know I've even said it before. Quest for Fire. I like that song. I know a lot of people don't, but I don't mind it whatsoever. So I like peace of mind, but come on, man. Staying class, <laughs> this record here. Oh man, it it's exciter opening it up. This is just fucking amazing. White hot. <laughs> I mean, white heat, red hot. Come on now. I mean, <laughs> Invader, Saints in Hell. And then I it's been touched upon before, but um uh beyond the realms of death, I can't say anything i can't add anything else to it because that song to me is fucking amazing that riff on the chorus just gets me going every single time um better by you better than me you know it had the controversy with it but um that's right yeah that's still, right yep yeah, still, still a great song but uh easy for me staying class in my opinion great album yeah, eleven out of ten record for me. One of my favorite Judas Priest records. At first, you said ten albums, then you took it back because you were giving one on eleven. Okay. Yeah, so. yeah. I had to think about it because I was like, you know what, staying class means a lot to me. It's yeah. one of my favorites. For sure, for sure. Ed, firstly, you're on the hot seat. All right. Uh, yeah. Wow. Like everyone said, it'd be two fantastic albums. Uh, Peace of Mind is probably my second favorite Maiden album. Um, Love that album to death. Every song is great, even including the other songs that some people don't like, like Quest for Fire or whatever. Fantastic songs. Still Life, one of my all-time favorite Maiden songs, probably my second Maiden uh, favorite Maiden song after Children of the Damned. I wow. always love the haunting atmosphere. That's it's uh, cool. Very, very cool. Very, very great song. Um, so like I said, so this album, just the 10 out of 10, fantastic, absolute classic. But Stained Class, that is my favorite Priest album. Um, I worship that album. It's just an absolute, there's classics and there's classics. This is a top classic for me. Um, Exciter, one of the early thrash metal songs. Um, it's just, just kicks things off and started a whole career, thrash career. Hey, we can play really fast and just built uh, so many thrash fans in the early, early 80s started their career around that song. Um, Beyond the Realms of Death, my favorite Judas Priest song. Um, as other people have mentioned, just a beautiful, beautiful, haunting song. Just fantastic riffs, fantastic lyrics, fantastic everything. Um, Saints in Hell, I can't believe I'm missing Judas Priest on this tour because I had to fucking work and I miss when they played around <laughs> me. Um, I love that song. I got to see Rob play Saints in Hell when he toured with Halford um, mm. years ago. Um, so at least I got to see him play it live, but that's a fucking beautiful song. Um, so for me, um, definitely Stained Class. I mean, both both albums fantastic, but Stained Class is one of the greatest albums by anyone of all time. Um, there you go, Stained Class all the way. All right, so far it's a broom except for Ovi. Mm. Ovi is a fly in the ointment. <laughs> I'm like the All right, Tim, <laughs> welcome back. Hey, so wow. Um yeah, so peace of mind. Um I, again, that was the album that really turned me on to Maiden, I think, that really got me into them. Um, you know, and again with the with the uh, songs, I, I, 
Where Eagles Dare, you know, great. the whole album is just great. And I, I don't have a problem with any of the songs. You know, Quest for Fire, I, I like that song. Still Life is one of my favorites. The Tame of Land, all that stuff's great. You know, and it, when we when I was first thinking about these two albums, the Stained Class, of course, you know, I am obviously a little partial to Priest. I mean, that's, you know, I have to be, I guess. And I was kind of thinking to myself, wow, this is a tough one, man. I mean, peace of mind. Is that kind of my kind of favoring that? But now that after listening to some of the conversations, man, I don't know, man, I think I have to go with stained class. Um, I don't know for anybody that Steve, I don't know if you remember when we played a couple months ago at mm-hmm. Quinn's Pins, we actually opened up with Exciter. Yes. And it's the first time we've done that song in a long yeah, time. Yeah. Um we always do Beyond the Realm. That's like that's like a must. We always have to do that song. But I'm kind of glad we just brought Exciter back to the set list. Um, yeah, to me, like that album is ahead of its time. That's like a metal album that's ahead of its time. You know, with songs like Exciter and Saints in Hell. You think about it, there's very. It's hard to point to any bands from at that time that were playing like that. Um, so I have to go with staying class, even though I was almost edging towards peace of mind. I, I got pulled back. No, I'm going with staying class on this one. Yeah, Definitely. You got, you got to remember, this is 1978. I was listening to this oh, on, yeah. on an eight track in a 74 Plymouth Duster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I tell you what, there wasn't many eight tracks as heavy as that staying class. No. Uh, oh. Back then. <laughs> Good point. That was like their painkiller of the era, you know. At the oh, yeah. that was painkiller, yeah. long yeah. before painkiller. You know. I mean, yeah, yeah, for sure. Shout out to Les Binks too. He kind of made them a heavier band than they were before that. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah. Hundred yep. percent. Cool. Count Rob. Yeah, it's kind of like when Travis joined. You know, years and oh, years, yeah. years later. Yep. Yep. Sure. Exactly. Same thing. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Ralph. Welcome back. So this is kind of like just like the last one that you compared. I mean, you could go either way. Uh, Stained Glass Class is uh, in my top three favorite Priest albums. But uh, Peace of Mind is my favorite Bruce Dickinson album. Um, Revelations, all the songs you guys have been talking about. The thing with uh, Stained Class is I, I prefer the song versions on Unleashed in the East, which I, I think we were some people mm-hmm. were saying last time, last yeah. episode. So, yeah. you know, I'm more, I just love the, like when I was a kid, I didn't get all the old Judas Priest. I got Unleashed in the East and that was like my, my old Judas Priest album. Like I, that, I covered everything. It was like a best of for, for that. And I, I worship that album, but um, yeah, I'd have to go with peace of mind. It's, it's my favorite sounding Iron Maiden album. It just, it sounds so perfect. I love the production on it. And here comes uh, Eddie headbanging. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Wow. Another little Eddie. Um, nice. And I got the, the, the cloth version of Eddie in the straight jacket. And uh, another another trooper. I got a McFarlane yeah. trooper that I didn't pull out either because got I, all. I didn't put it on the shelf there. But I even got this from Bed Bath and Beyond. My wife found this. It's like a 3D. <laughs> 3D oh, Iron that, Maiden. Bed Bath and Beyond is selling 3D Iron Maiden. They had a Led Zeppelin one. And wow. Told her, we got to get the Led Zeppelin one. And we, next time we went back, they didn't have any of them. But. Hey, you get it where you can. Yeah. 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 Get it where you can. All those housewives remodeling their bathrooms. It's like, yeah, let's get this 3D Iron Maiden uh, thing for the bathroom. <laughs> It'd be the most metal fucking bathroom ever. Nice. <laughs> With your Venom shower curtain, right? <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. Cool. So Ralph, you're going with the with Iron Maiden. Buy a hair. Buy a buy hair. A, buy, a, buy a buy a hair. <laughs> Tony yeah. Dio, you're now on the hot seat for this one. Okay, so peace of mind. Um, I like this album. I mean, the first three songs were Ingles Day, Revelation, Flight of Vickers, three of my favorite Maiden songs. Period. Um, I like I like Die with Your Boots On. I mean. Trooper is well overplayed, but I still like it. I like Still Life. Never care for Crest of Fire. Sun and Steel, not a bad song at all. To Tame a Land, not a bad song. Then, I mean, we're going to go to 
stained glass. So Exciter, it's like um, Ed said, one of the first thrash speed metal songs ever. I love White Heat, Red Hot. I love Better By You, Better To Me, which is actually a Spooky Tooth cover. Wow. Um, yeah. um, Gary Wright. I, I never Ooh. understood that, too. They went on trial for a song that they didn't even write. <laughs> yeah, because because they they were actually the big band at the time, you know. Yeah. So they why didn't they bring the members? Of, why didn't the members of Spooky Tooth? Why weren't they there to testify? Because they would have sued them. They would have got no money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love the title track, Stained Class. I love Invader. That that uh, that crazy guitar effect at the beginning. And this is crazy. Um, Sings in Hell. They played it last night. Great song. I love Savage. Of course, Beyond the Realms of Death is great, and Here is in. Uh, these both just great records, but I got to go Priest because it's just, I love this record. It's like in, probably in my top three records as well from Judas Priest, and it's just so raw and so heavy. And for, It was so heavy for 1978. I mean, there was nothing probably even out there remotely close to that, maybe Black Sabbath, and that was it. Um, but like I said, I, I do love both, both records. Um, I don't have any priest memorabilia from that period, but I do have a uh, that's a piece oh, of my oh. tour book that someone gave me, and it's actually autographed. I got it autographed by Bruce and Adrian when they toured together. Nice. They, signed, they signed it in ballpoint pen, so you really can't see it. And <laughs> and I have my um, like Ralph had. I have have a little trooper. Nice action <laughs> figure here. But um, and I got this cool Judas Priest book from Japan called heavy metal photo book from japan it's got some awesome photos got a lot of photos from the 70s in it as well that's, that's a pretty cool piece to have but yeah i'm gonna go judas priest on this one as well but to touch on what tony said about that little controversy so i don't think it was the fact that they wrote the song the, the backward the masking. yeah the family tried they saying that, that judas priest put some backward masking in there which yeah. i actually went back and tried to find and I don't know, man. I know the kids. It's it's a tragedy what happened. They were drinking and doing drugs all day before it happened. From what I heard, I wasn't there. But uh, yeah, to me, you got to be on something to figure that out because I I couldn't find find it. Ah. <laughs> Shit, huh? That record was on the turntable when the cops showed up. You got it, man. Cool. And the mother of <laughs> one of them took that and went running with it. Because you're talking about the PMRC with Tipper yeah. Gore, cunt all fucking tied up in a knot and all that bullshit. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's where that gets tied in because Priest was in her filthy 15 or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, so that was that was all sort of tied into that. And there was a thing, if you read K.K. Uh, Downing's book, <clears throat> they tried to get the original masters from Sony or Columbia and the label yeah. was like dragging their ass trying to get the master tapes so everybody could listen to it in, in court. And the court made them pay like something like ten thousand dollars for like dragging their feet, getting the tape and all that bullshit. It was a it was a big stupid fucking, you know, again, satanic panic bullshit. Geraldo Rivera sucking his own dick fucking right. thing. Let's get this monetized still here, James. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. At least you're not. I don't know how I really feel. <laughs> well, now we. I want. I got a question for Denny. Uh, were you in the Filthy Fifteen? <laughs> if I was, what? He said that the, the PMRC is Filthy Fifteen. Would aggression have been in the Filthy Fifteen of Canada? No, man. The only well, other, like we were like we were like below more evil than the evil. Yeah. You, were, you would have been above the filthy 50. Too evil. Defenders of the evil. <laughs> evil fantasy, so. Um, it's funny because I, I, I did the, just because I haven't done it in a while and I miss you guys, I did the tally of like, I, I did the score of the fucking albums and everything. And I put Tim's name and I, I put Judas Priest before you even spoke i put this vote and <laughs> i put your vote on judas priest but yeah like uh you know what like 78 judas priest was not what you guys um might expect it was like after in the 80s like they were a weird fucking band um and 
I don't even know if there's anything like in the present day that would have been that I could like say like a name of a band that's really weird right now that's kind of like on its own and it, and it was beautiful because listening to Priest was a unique experience if you want to hear that type of like metal and there was not much to go for at that time like it was they were weird they still have some songs on there that I I don't know my, I might have skipped back then but stained glass is you know I think like as it aged through the years it's just better and better and better like it, it's it's at that time priests like we're not listening to anybody i'm sure they were not listening to managers or anything just like let's what the fuck we want and it's beautiful uh some classic on there um i listened to uh, count ralph's comment about the unleash in the east and i feel like that a lot of time but because um in my version of Unleash in the East, they didn't have many songs from Stained Glass. Wow, I had to go back right. and listen to Stained Glass to go and get get the song. So I really like Stained Glass and like everything you guys said, like Beyond the Realms of like Jesus Christ. Like it's such a perfect song. Stained Glass, St. Sanel, Exciter, good opener. Um that I like better by you and like and I it's uh it, it's it's a good cover for Priest to do at that time. So I don't know. Um and then on the peace of mind, I was very surprised. Revelation, great song, uh written by Bruce Dickinson. Um and I I it's one of my favorite maiden song. It's so well done. I love where he goes there. Like James says, you know, intro to Nico McBrain from um, uh, you know, like and then that old song and everything, but um, Maiden has a really weird, uh, uh, I have a really weird history of like singles from their record. Like, because on the first album is Running Free, on, mm -hmm. this, on Killers, it was Twilight Zone, mm -hmm. <laughs> which weird selection of a song. Uh, then they went with Run to the Hill, and this one, Fight of Icar Icarus. Like, I mean, um, I, I felt for me in 1984, uh, I felt like that Maiden had some amazing song and some okay song. Uh, they were not all like as equally um, as um, intense as like what number of the Beast had. Like, you know, like in the end, like, you know, okay, we have like Two Tame Land was trying to reproduce a little bit of Allo Be Thy Name. You know, some songs were trying to match what was on Number of the Beast, and I think they hit the spot on a few places. Um, so I'm going to go with Stained Class just because um, there was nothing like that. Uh, and, like, it it aged so well. Uh, and there's some, like, fucking classic. There's some, some songs on there that are becoming more classic than songs that were, like, more known to the public. After that, now people go back to the old catalog of Priest and the 70s stuff is becoming more and more prominent. They're like these, you guys said, they play like Saints and Ellen show. Um, so yeah, I'm going with, uh, I, I'm going with Saints last. Very cool. Very cool. Now, as we were talking about like them having court and legal problems, they had problems with Beyond the Realms of Death too, didn't they? It's a Les Briggs song. There's a drummer that made that song. The first well, I credit, mean, you know. but beyond the realms of death, didn't they have court issues with that too? About something with someone, because it's kind of about. I, I thought that that was also a song they had. Maybe I'm wrong. No, they, 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 was... the, one kid, the one kid tried to blow his head off, and he he hit two friends were listening to Priest, and one killed himself, and the other one tried to kill himself, and he blew half his face off, and then his parents sued priest yeah. for it and then the kid uh, ended up dying later on anyway yeah. but that yeah. was uh that was the better by you better than me thing. i always thought that there was some kind of uh, i think i i think i did read something about they had some problems with beyond the realms of death as yeah, well yeah yeah it but because anyhow it is a bad i mean well not a bad song it's a great song but it, the lyrics are very very of emotional course. Yeah, yeah of course so <clears throat> My point of view on this, I agree. Like when you first look at this thing, you're like, "How do you go with like peace of mind?" Another, 
you know, 10 out of 10, just like everyone's been saying. And I'm not everyone saying it's a 10 out of 10, but for me, the trooper I never get sick of, Die With Your Boots On, Revelations, wow, what a great song. It kicks off an eagle stare. I love to tame a land. And, but when I look over at the list of stained class, and I was talking about riding around in a souped up muscle car, listen to this on a track, put this in at that time, you know, we had Black Sabbath, we had Deep Purple, which all the stuff I loved back then. Bachman Turner Overdrive, uh, Denny's Buddies, you know, this this came on and it was like, wow. And just Exciter, White Heat, Red Hot, Invader, Savage, I think you say it's underrated. I think it's one of the best songs in this album, one of their best songs. Absolutely. Was, and uh, of course, Beyond the Realms of Death was it's such a epic song so i am going to lean with staying class on this one it's my favorite judas priest studio album me too it is and uh i think i'm gonna pitch this over to denny who i said would be my co-host he has a question for the group now it's not going to be an album uh question it's going to be a guitar question and uh i'll let i'll let him uh pass this around for us Go before ahead, I do the before I do the the before I do the uh okay the guitar question like I I got one of my buddy uh just lives down the street a huge metal fan I know him we met at a Venom show in like early 80s but um I'm always telling him like hey we're doing this we're doing that and he's like ah oh, again you guys doing fucking Maiden and Priest again and he's like so so he's like go go and ask your friends Who's the best singer? Dickinson or Alford? <laughs> and no. I was like, you know, I was thinking about it and I was like, holy fuck, like this. That's you know, cool. like, what do you guys think? Like, <laughs> what do you guys think? I'll go first. Yeah, go. Rob, Rob Halford, in my opinion, is That's one right. of my favorite singers of all time. Love Bruce. Love him what he does, you know, but in you know, my opinion, Rob Halford, he's Bruce ha is is very dynamic, but in my opinion, I, I I just can't go against Halford, man. He's one of my the metal favorites. god, the metal, metal god, god, man, and he's just you know, that he's just that guy, you know. Is when I think of like, if I would think of a heavy metal vocalist. To put in an encyclopedia, it has to be a picture of Rob Halford, in my opinion. Anybody, uh, anybody think it would be Dickinson? Yeah, sure. I'll go with Dickinson because he, <laughs> uh, he, he he has much more, uh, I don't know, valuable or variables in his voice. He can do much more. Halford can scream pretty good. But, uh, I mean... He can. He uh, can. As, as for more dynamic and more like uh, depth in vocals, uh, Dickinson, I feel Dickinson. It, it, I, this is a personal matter. It's just what you feel. I'm going to chime in one more time, just, and I'm going to be done with this. Out of seeing, you know, Priest, and I've seen, you know, I haven't seen Iron Maiden recently, but I've seen live shows for him. Longevity-wise, in my opinion, Halford has is still on he he might not be as great as he was back in the day but he is still very much on top of his game what is he 76 now yeah and bruce bruce still does a really good job but to me he has step he has taken a step back a slight bit but rob halford in my opinion goes up on stage and he gives it and he, Absolutely. he hasn't lost a step in my opinion maybe just what? a little but not much what oh, Bruce has a disadvantage, so Bruce has had throat cancer, so he has a disadvantage. And, I, and that's respectable, and I, yeah. I agree with that. But what Obi was saying about uh, Bruce having more dynamics in his voice, I I think Rob has more because Rob changes his I, voice. He almost does characters in the songs. You know, he changes his vocal style for different characters. Same, same. Yeah. I feel like Rob Halford's got more of a bluesy, soulful thing going on than dickinson does i feel like dickinson can be a little fucking sterile and a little in 
in this one box where Halford can be in that power metal box, but can also be bluesy and can also be, you know, a deep singer and all that. I, I feel like Rob Halford pants down. Yeah. I'd like to chime in. So I think one of the things that makes Halford <laughs> so special is his dynamics. I mean, you look at, you look at Halford, you look at a song like, before the dawn or last rose but then he does a song like painkiller or on the new album serpent and the king that is that song the, the vocals on that out are just insane there i don't i've never seen a metal singer that that's as dynamic as him you know then they, they don't do a song like turbo lover you know it's like he, he's all over the place and i do agree about the bluesy thing he does have a little bit of that bluesy thing going but he could be as powerful as anybody just screaming heavy metal vocals the guy is amazing even at 71 years old to to do some of the stuff even on the new album um i don't care if it's in the studio or not that's his that's his voice that's him doing that in the studio so electric and and bruce is one of my favorites too I, i love bruce but I can't put anybody ahead of Halford in that regard. Definitely. Yep. Definitely. No Electric, I always sounded to me like when I first heard it, it sounds like two singers, the, the guy doing the up here in space. Mm. Uh, logo yeah. that, that you think, you know, comes in and it's just. Dude, him on Screaming for Vengeance, the song, oh my God. He, yeah. oh man, he is soaring on that. Yeah, I, 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 I think I'm too. with Halford too. Halford, I think, has way more range. But out of the books, out of the autobiographies, out of these two, I go with this one, the third one, called the Anno's book, because this ah. book is nuts. The because that book is, is 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 about as it should be in the fiction section. The tall tales of the Paul Diano. I tell you what, if Steve Levin was here tonight, he's on vacation. Read, it is a good read. <laughs> if Steve Levin was, was here, about he, Beyond the Realms of Death, it it is the song that. That they went to court over about the kids coming. Oh, it was beyond. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Why did they bring up better than you? Better by you. Better. I think it's because they were looking through the whole album to find other backwards messages. So they kind of they were like because I think Heroes In. If I remember right, Heroes In was brought up again. I think that said "do it" or something in it. You know. Oh boy. Through the years, like uh, uh, it's funny because Alfred was at a certain level and. Of course, when Dickinson joined Maiden, I think in popularity, he kind of like peaked a little bit. And then after that, when they went into their solo career, somehow like Alfred, like at some point, Alfred became like a, more like a Lemmy figure, like a, like a mm. icon, metal god. Like, But for a while, like through the years, like Dickinson was perceived as the top metal singer. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, in the night, like I think when the uh, metal was not as popular out there, like uh, I think like Alfred gained some ground, and after that, like now he got that metal god title, and now he's like in the Lemmy category. He, he definitely I, is, and being yeah. able to like go to a show, I was thinking this when I saw them a yeah. couple weeks ago, like sitting in the audience and watching Alfred on stage, just realizing that he is still on stage. 50 years right yeah. and yep. 70 and his actually actual age is 72 sounds he amazing he's 72 years old now and i tell you what i will vote for rob halford over dickinson on this yeah. question and I, this will be a question on an episode we're going to do made and of course and priest a couple more of these because we're never going to get them all done in one or two yeah. so but uh you know we're uh we're talking like him doing victim of changes to me makes him the metal god i mean yeah and plus i was having him on stage and still alive and you think of all the greats that aren't here anymore like lemmy or dio that are gone and seeing him and you're like hey whatever you can say about priest or whatever else you're seeing the metal god still performing on stage and the new album wow and like the last two albums they come out we can't talk too much about that because i want to compare New no. priest and no. new maiden in another episode, but hey, we can even talk about we can talk about priest going with Dio with with the uh, priest going with uh, Ripper and Blaze with Maiden. We can talk about 
Palford solo and Dickinson solo too. If we go yeah. when we go into that chapter here, for sure, it'll be the, su the summer of Iron Maiden and Priest on the Rock Fantasy YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. We'll never get done with this. I don't think. I think this is the reason why I like point of entry best because for me, point of entry, you get to hear uh, most sides of 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 Rob Halford really from from heading to the highway to turning circles to troubleshooter mm -hmm. to to like Solar Angels. To, that's the first album he really kind of branches out. Yeah, there's more pop sensibilities on that record. Yeah. So. Half these bands, they wouldn't be wearing chains and leather if it wasn't for Rob Halford. No, goddamn right. regardless of his intentions. <laughs> goddamn right. <laughs> Very Held true. For leather. It's yep. kind of crazy how Uriah Heap just came through the same month with Saxon, and they're, they're going on 50, they're 54 years they've been out. Oh, oh yeah, they're, they're great as well. And Saxon's all awesome. priests are out there doing it still. All these English bands are still. Yeah. Fifth yeah. or seventh. Also, just like Alfred. Yeah. I, I missed the Saxon tour, unfortunately. I had so many other things going on. But, that one uh, I made it to. That was fantastic. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, I so, liked Denny, it's, we're over you an hour. My other question? We, we're we over wanna... an hour into this episode. Why don't we end it with your question? And we'll be back in a couple <laughs> weeks to go on about this debate again. And maybe we'll what? have some other guests come back on. So. Uh, Steve right, Levin so... was on vacation today. Robert Tuttle was busy. I saw him in the store. So a couple of our regulars were here tonight. But it's fun to have guests back in and out. And this was all James's fault. So if you're sick about hearing about these two bands, blame him. <laughs> the guy with the poison <laughs> shirt. He's going to get beat up later. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give one shit. <laughs> Beat me up in the comments, Dave White. You could suck my dick. Wow. <laughs> Look at that poser. He doesn't even know anything about our man. He's got a poser shirt on. <laughs> so yeah, my, my question now goes to like guitars. Um uh, because like I you know, I was thinking about Priest Maiden, of course, a little bit of two eras. Uh even though like the maiden guitar player are definitely more influenced by Shanker uh and Uli on John Rott than uh than like more the priest guitar players, but uh, like for you guys, like um, from a guitar duo uh, performance and, and influence, who do you guys think influence more today's met, uh, guitar players, metal guitar players? Like, do you guys think like Tipton Downing uh, had more influence or uh, was it like Dave Murray and uh, Adrian Smith? I'd like to hear your comments on that. Wow. Shoot me now. <laughs> that's an really easy one for me I mean walking on glass I mean Dave Murray and Aaron Smith I mean yeah so easy for Albie it's not so easy for me I don't understand it's hard for I, I, I will say this I will pick Judas Priest over Maiden almost any day of the week but this question has got me look I love both these guitar duos and to me when I go to Iron Maiden that's who I go for I go for Adrian Smith and Dave Murray. You know, that's what I'm <laughs> punching a ticket in for. You know, Bruce and everything, but, you know, Steve Harrison, but those guitars on for Maiden are great. I don't, I don't, come back to me. All right, so we're going to start, we're going to, so I'm going to go back in the order we were in. James, what do you got to say? All right, so me personally, when I listen to Iron Maiden, I listen to Steve Harris more. That's probably because I'm a bass player. But I also was a guitar player for a long time before I, you know, picked up the bass and started playing bass in bands. Man, I mean, uh, fuck, I guess I got to say Tipton and Downing be because they were first. Yeah, not easy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Tipton and Downing, dude. Like, I don't know. It's. Oh, fuck. You got me over a barrel. <laughs> you said it. I, I think the riffs overall in Judas Priest are better than the riffs in Iron Maiden, if that makes any sense. I think the guitar soloing going back and forth in Priest. 
there's just like more bluesy shit going on in there. There's more of like the quote unquote Sabbath shit going on in there. Kind of the thin Lizzie thing. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it could change any day, but today it's Judas priest. Okay. It's tipped in and downing. All right. So, Oh, my miles, you want a little break still? I'm going to go to Ed next. <laughs> so I'm a... yeah. uh, me. All right. Um, yeah, for me, it's actually not that hard. <clears throat> um, I think, Dave Murray, Adrian Smith, fantastic guitarist. Absolutely. Influential for decades to come. Fantastic. Well, you're talking about Priest and Tipton and um, Downing are the guitar duo. Um, they were the original guitar duo um, that created the metal feel, the metal sound, the dueling guitars. Um, I mean, we had Scorpions before that and other bands. You're doing it in different ways. But for Lizzie. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. There were bands doing doing, doing guitars, us. but for metal, those two just created what became the dual metal guitar sound, Excellent. um, and they just were fantastic. Even back to the earliest Priest <laughs> albums, they were fantastic. Trading mm -hmm. off licks and just being bluesy, being heavy metal, being classic <laughs> rock, putting it all together, and just creating a heavy metal sound. And as a kid growing up. Um, looking at Rob Halford and all the metal and spikes and even the early, early um, stage wear as well. And looking at those two guitars, that was heavy metal to me. Um, so absolutely, those that's the guitar duo for me. No doubt about it. Cool. Taking nothing away from me. Fantastic guitars in every way. But you can't beat Tipton and Downing. And I, I don't know if you could say it any better than you did. Uh, <laughs> no, Count Ralph is... But you're Count Ralph, but you still gotta go in here. <laughs> um, like um, as far as influential, I mean, Priest influenced Iron Maiden, you know. So I'm going to take Tipton. Also, I got KK's book here. I got the signed copy, and I have yeah. Adrian Smith's book. But this book is ninety percent about fishing. Fishing, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really cool read, though. Really? It's, it's, Some you know good cool stories in between. Though? <laughs> yeah, it's like he he knows he's going to uh, Slovakia, so he finds where's the Great Lake to go and what are you fishing for in Slovakia, and then he brings the tackle to that. So it's kind of it's mixed together with uh, tour stories and everything. And is he using was, guitar? Is he using guitar strings to fish or not? <laughs> yeah, he's a master fisherman and he's really into it. But uh, really quick, Tony, you had that that heavy metal book. Is yours actually in Japanese? Like the the words. Tony disappeared. Um, no, it's got it's got Japanese writing in the back. Most oh, of it's photos. Um, it, doesn't even, it doesn't even have any writing by the photos, and the front's different in yours too. Yeah. Yours, has got, yours has got the square that says heavy metal photo book. Mine's like this on the back. Did you ever get the? Um, did you ever get the any of these other ones? There was an ACDC one, a Deep Purple. I have the Deep Purple. I have oh, a Deep. Wow. Purple. I had the Aussie one, but uh, I cut it up when I was a kid and I hung it up all over the place. Uh, I always want to. I have this one too. It's called Metal Mania. Nice it's got a poster, uh, poster and stuff. I in got it. I got this one called Metal Gods, and then <laughs> well, I got this one. Got this one called, pop -offs. This one has, ah, I, I have that one. That's I have great. that one too, but I can't I find it. I was looking for it earlier. That's cool. And it, here's like a guitar tab book. But yeah, that this is my favorite of them all. It's the Martin Popoff one. Yeah, Martin's is it, great. He yeah. finds buttons and patches, and I love all the little extra mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, it's great. This is a great, great Iron Maiden book. But uh, I got a couple other Iron Maiden books that I won't pull them out. Yeah, I've got yeah, a Martin Popoff Iron Maiden book that's really good. It's a, it's a hardbound book. Yeah, I got that those. one. That one's yeah, really it's a big nice. one. All yeah, right. So, who was next? I got confused with all these book showings. I I think I go after Cat. Right, did I go after Ralph? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna take the wild card here. I'm going with Yannick Gears. Wow. <laughs> How he swills the guitar. The question is: Is Yannick even on most of the show? Is he even? Is his volume even up? That's Who a cares? question for That's a question for Teddy Parth. It is. It is. I, I, it is it, well, I got you know, to totally agree with what the way Ed stated it. That. You know, Tipton and Downing. I mean, that's the that's the beginnings. That's what that they're the most influential, I think, and they influenced Maiden, like uh, Ralph said. 
for sure. I mean, just listen to the trade-off leads. I love it. And Green Man Leash is one of the best with his trading back and forth and that's that solo. It's just so cool. All right. We go to last but not least. Well, we got to go back to Miles still, but we're going to Tim next. Yeah, so for me, it's pretty easy. It's Tipton and Downing because we're talking influence. And when I think of guitar to duos, like instantly I go right to Tipton and Downing. And and again, as was stated by everyone else, that it has not, it's nothing to take anything away from uh, Adrian Smith and Dave Murray. They're great. But right away, when I think guitar duos, I, that I mind always goes to Tipton and Downing first. I always think of those two. Just seeing the two of them rocking out together and stuff, and so yeah, that's it's a pretty easy. This one's a pretty easy one for me. It's definitely Tipton and Downing. Miles. So I know it was hard for me, but Ed kind of convinced me. Yeah, like when when on in all honesty, I love both guitar duos to death. I think they're great, but. It is true. When I when you do bring up a heavy metal guitar duo, it's got to be uh, Tipton and Downing. You know, that's just two of the most influential. If anybody ever brings up like, hey, man, who's the best two guitarists to ever do it in one band? 90, probably 95 percent of people in that are metal fans are going to say Tipton and Downing. And also, you know. Two, two guitar players that downright almost despise each other can make it work. They, I mean, they're they're up there because I, I heard that Glenn Tipton can't – I mean, uh, K.K. Downing can't stand Glenn Tipton. I've heard that as well, but – Yep. But, but they made it work. Like I mean – no. It wasn't like that back then. It, nah, that, came, I, nah. that came at the end of the career. They how make far – I thought it there was something that K.K. Downing – how far was it back that he said he started hating – Glenn Tipton. If you read KK Downing's book, KK Downing says that he started resenting Glenn a long way back, like in the 80s. That's what I heard. Because Glenn would be like, oh, you're going to solo here real quick, and then I'm going to take the bulk of the work <laughs> as far as the solo goes. <laughs> and KK just kind of was like, eh, all right, you do your thing. I'll keep my mouth shut for the sake of the band and all that shit. So if you read KK's book, it goes back to the 80s. I read his book. It's just that, you know, KK and Ian Hill, they 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 started the band. Glenn right. comes in and then he tries to take over. So anybody yeah. would resent that a little bit, you know? Yeah. Of course. They got along good enough throughout those. Yeah, they, they got along good enough and, you know, they made it work, you know, you cannot deny that those those two guitar players are up there, or oh, yeah. up there with the well, they probably are the best. <laughs> and it's fucked up how like you know, KK, uh, you know Rob Halford quits Judas Priest for like thirteen years or whatever. Yeah, and then he he tries he tries his industrial shit that sucked, and then he tries his Pantera rip off kind of band that's pretty. <laughs> but then you know, thirteen years later, he comes begging back to come back in the band. KK's like, yeah, come on back because. You know, I heard you're, you're the original guy, and then and then they try to do it when the KK is ready to come back, and you know when KK he with Nostradamus that was supposed to be like their final album and their final tours. They did the epic, tour, and then they decided to keep going. So that's where the management and everything they had a big falling out, but they were kind of supposed to be done then. So now people are like, oh, now KK is not making money, so. He, he wants to get back in. He's like, years later, he wants to get back. It's his band. He wants to join him back. And now Halford has a problem with getting him back in the band, especially with Glenn Tipton not being able to play. I think it's total bullshit that KK's not in the band right now. Absolutely. I, I think it's total bullshit yeah. that KK Downing is not in that band. And I've also heard that <coughs> Downing has said that the only reason why he didn't quit, quit Judas Priest sooner is because Rob Halford left when he did. Yes. Um, yes. You, you read that in KK's book and apparently Halford didn't really beg to come back. If you read KK's book, I don't, I don't know. I wasn't there. Mm. It was Glenn's idea for Halford to come back. Well, they were playing clubs with Rick. Right. They were doing, they were doing large <laughs> yeah. clubs, yeah. venues. Yeah. And they, 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 By and the chance get, up here. Yeah. yeah in yeah, order to get Halford back in this, on the demolition tour. Yeah. 
What'd yeah. you say, Ralph? Both needed each other, just like Iron Maiden needed Bruce Dickinson back in. Exactly. Maiden no, were, were, were doing back. small things. That was a yep. very similar situation I'll be in another episode coming yep, up yep, soon. Yep. Yep. Denny, Denny, what do you say? So, like, I, you know, um, I'll tell you guys one a couple of things maybe that haven't been mentioned yet. Um, it's a lot harder to play some of the pre-song on guitars than it is to play Iron Maiden. Um, and I'm not talking about like uh, British Steel and like Point of Entry, which are like unlike all the other albums from a guitar standpoint. Like it's almost like British Steel and Point of Entry. They're trying to get like a more simplistic ACDC kind of vibe going on. Uh, but if you listen to songs like uh, El Ben for Letter, if you listen to a song like Saints and Elves, Stained Glass, Screaming for Vengeance, uh, it's not easy to play the riffs and the solos exactly the way they are. Like Glenn Tipton is a better guitar player than KK Downey. Well, he was. I don't know right now, but he was. And I think it's it's a for KK Downing and Tipton, it's 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 a matter also of like taste and what you prefer because K.K. Downing is definitely more classic rock in his approach to guitar solo than Glenn Tipton, who was kind of innovator, doing things that was not done at that time with the speed and the note selection. It's almost like he's he took everything from like all the guitar heroes at that point and kind of make it his own. Um, and he was doing phrasing and uh, harmonics, pinch harmonics that people were not doing at that speed at that time. But when Maiden came, especially with the first album, you know, like people don't talk often about the first Iron Maiden, but Jesus Christ, did my friend play the fuck out of Phantom of the Opera? Like, diddle dee, diddle dee, diddle dee, diddle dee, diddle dee. And yeah. the solos were easier to catch, easier to do. Um, and and I think it was harder for us to try to reproduce the priest solos exactly the way they were because they were more complex. Um, so like, you know, when you look at all the bands today, I think a lot of people maybe on that on this call would be like, oh, Maiden, Maiden, Maiden. Because they, they don't associate the solos with the guitar player, it's like a sound. It's now became like a power metal kind of thing where like, you know, it's like evolved into what it is now. But like, you know, for me, I would also pick, personally, I would pick Judas Freeze, Tipton and Downing because they started the the foundation of what the metal, get. you have to have a blonde guy. You have to have a guy with dark hair. You have to have a certain look and then you know, even Priest, I mean, even Slayer might have been like, hey, uh, Adam, yeah. you have blonde hair, you're in, and then you got brown hair, you're in, and fuck, in my neighborhood in Montreal, people like, hey, looking for a blonde guitar player to match our fucking, like, brown hair guitar player, so it's so <laughs> much more than just the guitar playing, it's the image, it's, it's, they kind of add the, uh, and the cover of Omish in the East is a fucking like uh, John was saying about battery, it's like the blueprint of a metal band. You got to fucking look like this if you want to be a metal band. And look who uh, did they get to replace KK Downing. They get a, a KK clone pretty much. A yeah. Younger, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for Richie Faulkner looks just like KK Downing. <laughs> and the young KK Downing. Yeah, it, yeah, is, it is what it is. But yeah, like uh, for me, like I always been a Glenn Tipton fan, regardless if he was asshole or whatever. And now, funny, I'm so compassionate to like the fucking KK Downing situation. I I love KK Sprees and all that, but back then, Len Tipton was kind of a guitar hero on his own because we couldn't play a solo. Like it, it, you needed to fucking sit down and really study what he was doing. But I could pick up the Maiden solo like no problem because it's it was easier to play uh, for us when we were kids. So yeah, so much. It's it's uh you know in the end both highly influenced influential like guitar duos. Uh, but Priest, I think, it's got a little bit of an edge. I don't want to get into my Tim Lizzy theory because that's another fucking four hours of talking. But uh, yeah, right. It's it's a good topic of discussion because 
they really both bands kind of like build the, the the foundation of what like metal guitar is today. They were Trump. talking about. Uh, I'm gonna re I'm gonna lean with uh, KK and Tipton on this too, just because they were the innovators of it. You know, they were before Maiden, so I'm gonna go with that. We're talking about how how this uh, imagery is. We're doing this episode. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. This is a classic blacklight poster. It's called Heavy Metal Two, and it just went off because I. But it's uh, it looks like it's a total bootleg. It's got an any creature on the top. Anybody can Google this. Just put <laughs> Heavy Metal Two Blacklight poster. That could be KK down that down there, or that could be yep. Murray. It could be uh, yeah, yeah. So, and I actually have it hanging up in the thing over here. But I looked that up, and I just felt that I remember when we had this poster, and of course the guys have got like buttons on and just a classic poster maybe i should make a t-shirt out of it or something yeah. but uh yeah yeah for me, for me too this is going to be in the next episode but because i'm born in the 80s so for me it's like dave mary and janet gears those were that that was my first impression of maiden so okay. And also, the first album we have then is Stratton instead of Fader and Smith. So it's been like there's been some changes in Maiden. Yeah. For sure. Well, we thought we were going to get through this in one part, two parts. We're not going to. This is going to go on and on and on. It's that all James's insane. fault. Yeah, 2035. Got... Well, yeah. well, we're going to come back next week. Or not, oh, it'll be in two weeks because I'm off next week. So we'll continue the Iron Maiden discussion in a couple of weeks. Obi and Danny are going to work on something for next week. But Obi's Kitchen of Doom and Despair. The Kitchen yep. of Doom and Despair. I want a t shirt made of that or at least a bumper sticker. But uh, <laughs> next week we are going to come back, or oh, the next episode of this one, we will come back and we will talk about live albums. We will go yep. to 1984 and talk about Defenders of the Faith and Power Slave on the mm -hmm. next episode. Not the next episode, but the next episode of the Rock Fantasy yes. Iron Maiden Judas Priest discussion, which could be in a week, could be in two weeks, but it could be. And we'll be talking about this in July still. So uh, we've got many, many years to go and we thought we'd breeze through, but I almost felt like we were done with an episode after the first album comparison. Because sometimes we only compare one album, so I hope I hope Tim hasn't made plans for the summer because we want to bring him back too. So. <laughs> so please take a minute and hit like, hit subscribe on the channel, and all that good stuff. And I guess we wrap it up. We're done. We're done, right, Danny? Yeah. We're done. All done. done. We're done. Hey. All right, for it's James. For Steve Harris. For now. For now. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do the bass player thing next. Next, we'll, we'll be uh, uh, count. We'll bring it up. Yin next Hill, time. Yin I, Hill I, against I Steve Harris. Yeah, there's, yeah, no, there's right. really no comparison there. Oh, that's easy. That. Oh yeah, come on. Hey, the next time we might even talk about Turbo. All right, so Obi, Miles, yeah. Ed, Count Ralph is Tony Dio, Sasquatch, Tim. Thank you all for your time tonight. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, share this video around, all that good stuff. And Until we'll see you next stories. time. Yep. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah.